usually tractors have what's known as independent brakes. This allows one wheel to be braked at a time or independently to the other. So if we undo the catch, then we can brake the left hand wheel or the right hand wheel. So the brakes can be applied independently. And it's used for assisted turns doing field work and other situations where the front wheels lack grip for steering. But for road work, when you're going on the road, then the brakes must always be latched together. And so they operate as one and apply both brakes together. So the tractor will stop in a straight line and not verge off to the left or right. Time for a demonstration of independent brakes. Left hand brake. Right hand brake. Skidding the tractor round. But on turf it chews the surface up, as you can see. Next we'll have to remove the, the bung from the back plate to expose a hole which we're going to put a screwdriver through. Inside the hole we need to try and locate the star wheel. Yep, got the star wheel. And as we rotate the wheel we're going to turn the star wheel by moving the screwdriver handle towards the tractor to tighten. Moving across. If you haven't got a shoehorn then one can actually improvise by a adjustable spanner being used in the form of a, of a shoehorn here. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit and I put that in place there and go actually behind there and then we're going to lift up and remove the star wheel adjusting assembly. So that's our star wheel out of the way and that's then going to allow us to remove the spring from the star wheel side of the shoes. If the tractor veers off to the left it means the left hand brake's coming on first so you need to slacken off the left hand brake. If the tractor pulls to the right, it means the right hand brake is coming on first, so slacken off the right hand brake. Here, the tractor is pulling to the left. So the left hand brake will need to be slackened off. And so the idea is, I suppose, a bit like the old wagon wheels, isn't it? You, you heat the metal up sufficiently so it actually will just fall over the wooden wheel. And then when it cools down, it shrinks and uh, is a nice tight fit. So exactly the same here. Now we haven't put any grease in the bearing because obviously the grease would start to melt and in fact it could actually burn. Now that bearing's got quite nice and hot now so we're going to turn the heat gun off and put it in a safe position. We've got a gloved hand because that bearing's going to be hot 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 and literally fall into place. And just to make sure we've got a piece of metal tube in there just to be absolutely certain. There we are, that bearing's in place. However, a more accurate way is going to be using a DTI, a dial test indicator. And so this is what we've done here. We've got the DTI um, with its magnetic base attached to the, the back plate of the uh, 
brake assembly and the point is on the uh, actual hub and so using our lever we can now lever and we can get a reading from the DTI. Now it's just about four thou, only just. So we're just about within the limits specified by the manufacturer. 